In this Enterprise Ninja Pro Tip, we're gonna walk through eight commonly used ADB tools. Let's get started. All right, to start us out, I'm gonna focus on the first ADB tool I typically use, which is gonna be ADB devices. This allows you to know what devices are attached to the computer or if devices are attached. So I currently have a device attached. If you had multiple devices attached, you'd see those on this list. That is useful that if you have multiple devices and you need to send a command to a specific device, you want to record the serial so you can have it. So that is ADB devices. I'll also, if a device is not show up as connected, the typical troubleshooting will be checking the cables, checking to make sure that ADB is running properly on your computer, and also making sure that ADB is turned on on your devices. Second one we see used a lot is ADB Logcat. So ADB Logcat is a tool specifically that is pulling the logs directly off of what's happening on the device. It's a bit of a welling when you look at it. So one of the things I find myself doing is AD logcat and I'll do a grep. Grep allows you to search specifically or filters grep. So I'll do pipe grep and whatever I'm searching for. So if I was searching for blue fletch, so let's say I want to see what apps on blue fletch are running. I can see specific logs from blue fletch on the device itself. I'm going to go over here and run the blue fletch apps. You can see that logs happen. So as things are happening on the device itself, you could see the specific logs that are related to that item. This is useful if you're troubleshooting your application or a application, and you want to find out what's going on and search for specific errors within the logs themselves in real time. Clear this. The next command that is typically run is going to be ADB shell PM list packages. And this allows you to see the packages that are installed on your Android devices. So I'm going to go here. There's a number of default system apps. There's a couple of apps that I've installed. So let me do ADB shell PM list packages. So I can see all the packages that are installed. On a typical device, this may be a lot. So there's a couple of filters I use. The first one is dash three, which shows you just third party installed. So you can see just the three apps I've installed on this device. Or if you wanted to do dash S, you can see just the system apps. Another thing that's useful is if, you want to, if you're using an MDM and want to see if an MDM installs an app versus an individual, you can do dash I, and you can see what actually installed that specific app for the device. The fourth one is going to be ADB install and uninstall. It's actually two commands, but they're pretty much the same. So if you want to install an APK or application on your device, you can do ADB install and enter the name of that application. I do find a couple of things I end up using command-wise, dash R means replace. So if that app is already installed, it will replace it. And then dash G grants permissions, all permissions to that app. Normally, if you're installing that app through an MDM or EMM tool, it'll you can select the permissions you install with that app. But if you're doing development, you can do dash G to grant all permissions without having to have, go into the system settings and, and type those in. So let me show an example of this, dash R dash G, and I'm going to install an application. So let me select this BF browser app. So it formed a stream install. And then if I go back and list the packages for a third party, you can see that that app is now installed where it wasn't installed before. That's how you install apps. One of the other things you can do from an uninstall standpoint is, is pretty much the opposite of that. One of the values of doing this at shell PM list packages that you can actually get the, the names. So I'm going to do adb uninstall com.bluefletch.ems.browser and it will uninstall that package. So that package has now been successfully removed from the device. So that is the fourth command I typically run. A, a quick follow on for that is the next command, command number five, which is adb pull or, and also adb push. This is another two way one. But you can take a file and you actually push files to your device. So you have a configuration file or a specific image or something you wanted to run, like a, a background screen here, where you can do ADB push and you want to select the name of the file. So let's say I'm going to go and select this launcher JSON and I want to push that file specifically to a location on the device. So SD card slash download and that file will go there. And that actually did not work properly. So I need to actually list the name of the file. Launcher one.json. Let me lay it down again. All right, so that file will be there. So let me go to my Android device. I'll click on files, and you can see that launcher one JSON file is there. You can also pull a file off a device. So you can do ADB pull 
launcher. So let me path st card slash download slash launcher one dot json, and that will pull the file to whatever currently directory you're in on your machine. So that pulled the file back. So if you need a log file or a specific file off a device. One caveat or note to this is with Android versions higher than nine, Google has started restricting the directories you can get files from or push files to. So SD card is typically an open directory. SD card downloads is typically an open directory to read and write files from. The next command we end up finding ourselves running a lot is ADB shell. And ADB shell allows you to get directly onto an Android device and it effectively will run as a, you're on the shell, so you're running within the terminal on that device. So I do ls... I can see I'm actually running on the device itself. So I can do change directory. I can go to that SD card directory. See card, LS, I see downloads. So see downloads. And I can see those files that I laid down into that specific directory. So that is ADB shell. You can run other commands on here, such as netstat. You can see what's going on from the network connection. You can run... Yes, you see processes they're running on the device. And then when you want to get out of ADB shell, just type exit, and it'll return you back into the command for your computer. So that is command number six that we find ourselves running off for ADB. The next one I wanted to walk through is ADB shell AM start. And this is something we'll dive into more in a future video. But really, if you want to do a command to run something on the device itself, you can do ADB shell AM start. And this will actually run uh, specific actions or activities. So I can do dash A which is for activity, and I can enter the name of the activity. So I'm going to go to the click on the home button, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to open up the Android dot settings dot settings. So this, this should open the settings dialog on my device, and so you can remotely open or remotely run or trigger actions. There's a couple different ways to do this. The primary one is looking at dash A, which is the activity. You can also do dash N, and then there's a couple sub options. So you actually pass in parameters such as dash T, which will send data. So if you wanted to send data to it, or there's extras. And there's a lot more uh, options here. Like I said, we'll cover this in a future video. And the last ADB command we find people run a lot is ADB reboot. So this will restart the device. You know, if your device gets in a bad state or if you installed something and want to see what happens after rebooted, you will reboot it and my device is going to disconnect and I will no longer be connected. So I can do ADB mm. devices. I can see that I no longer have a device connected. So those are the commands that we end up running. A couple of resources to help with this. There's a website, adbshell.com, which has a lot of these examples of these, what they look like. So if you need examples, check this out. Also, there's a uh, developer, Alexei Korolev, from the Ukraine who created a, a cheat sheet or quick sheet of these. And then if you really want to dive into it, the developer.android.com, there's a subpage tools slash ADB that has deep dives into each of these commands and functionalities. If you have other questions or other enterprise Android pro tips you're looking for help with, leave them in the comments below. Thanks.